So off periods is one of the biggest problems our patients continue to face, uh, regardless of what type of levodopa is being administered. At some point, its effects going to wane based on its half-life in the plasma, based on the loss of the long duration response, the loss of buffering capacity due to striatal denervation, based on GI factors of gastroparesis and impaired absorption due to protein, perhaps bacteria in the gut. And all these things together make a patient who swallows levodopa, whether it's an immediate or extended release formulation, a variable in how it's absorbed. And it may be absorbed rapidly in 20 or 30 minutes. It may be absorbed after a delay of 40 or 60 or, or 90 minutes. Um, and recent studies looking at the absorption of levodopa really show us significant variability, uh, not only between different patients, but between different doses in the same patient. It could be different whether they're uh, fed or fasting, um, based on how long it gets out of the stomach and whether protein effect uh, can minimize its absorption. So there's a lot of problems with levodopa still that are not going to be solved uh, with extended release preparations. As well, Parkinson's probably begins in the gut, and the gut dysmotility may Im impact how these extended release formulations are absorbed. So it's much better to have a longer acting, but even the current long acting Ritari may last four, sometimes five hours, but it doesn't last six or eight hours. So there's still gonna be an off episode, and that off episode is gonna be defined by the next dose working before the prior dose is worn off. And it can be hard to overlap those, and that gap is what we call an off episode or off period. We want to have treatment for off episodes, but uh, sometimes we have to think about different ways of doing that. One way is just adjusting the levodopa closer and closer together, but you still have a problem with the next dose beginning to work, and you can't really get less than two and a half hours apart. We could try using longer acting, but we still have to have that same problem at the end of that dose. We could try adding medications that uh, make the plasma half-life longer, or the Compt inhibitor we always give with the decarboxylase inhibitor anyway, we can try to use a MAO inhibitor to make it last longer in the brain. And we can use uh, mimickers of dopamine, dopamine agonists that bind to the same dopamine receptor protein and sort of raise the trough up. We also have another class of medicines that are on demand. So they don't tend to raise the baseline in the trough, they tend to be used when the off period begins to occur. We have subcutaneous apomorphine available, we have inhaled levodopa, and these have an entry into the plasma within about 10 minutes, sometimes five minutes, because it avoids the GI dysmotility and delay absorption and gets right into uh, the plasma. So it can have a very quick and, and more reliable onset of action. And recognizing the GI dysmotility, we're trying to develop other non-normal medications uh, in this vein to, to get in without with more predictability. We have a sublingual apomorphine, hopefully will be approved in uh, next year. Um, and other drugs in development looking at that. Uh, we've also seen patients that no matter how much we increase levodopa and add adjunctive medications to uh, help it uh, last longer and, 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 and uh, work on the dopaminergic side, that non-dopaminergic medications can be helpful. We have a, a long-acting amantadine uh, that can not only improve dyskinesia but also improve off time by blocking glutamate recept receptors that are overactive. And more recently, we have an adenosine uh, A2A receptor antagonist that can improve off time by blocking uh, adenosine receptors that are overactive uh, in Parkinson's. So uh, we have uh, these better ways of delivering levodopa um, with, with enzymatic inhibitors, uh, dopamine agonists, um, longer acting preparations like Ritari. We also have infusions that are longer acting. We have non-dopaminergic strategies and we have non-oral strategies. Those are like three big buckets, I think.